hear his wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. So the first mention of false witnesses is found in Psalms 27, verse 12. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. The phrase, are risen up, is mentioned four times in the Word of God. Numbers 32, verse 14. And behold, ye are risen up in your father's stead, an increase of sinful men to augment yet the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel. Judges 9.18 says, And ye are risen up against my father's house this day, and have slain his sons, threescore and ten persons, upon one stone, and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. So here we get that three score, six hundred, three score, and six. And here we have these false witnesses rising up against the very ones that are fighting to deliver them. And notice that he says upon one stone. Okay, that's the stone of stumbling, which is the word of God, which is the blessed King James Bible. See, they don't like it when you tell them that God has preserved his word in the King James Bible, and that we must be KJV only. They don't like that, and they want to falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ and rise up against you. And if you keep reading a couple verses there in Judges 9, he says, Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the cruelty done to the threescore and ten sons of Jerubal might come, and their blood be laid upon Abimelech their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. So God connects cruelty with an evil spirit. So here in Psalms 27, 12, he says, For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty john 20 22 and when he had said this he breathed on them and saith unto them receive ye the holy ghost so we see here that this breathing that the lord jesus christ did represents the holy ghost but they are breathing out cruelty they are literally breathing out evil spirits Psalms 54 verse 3 says, For strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them. Selah. So Psalms 27 12 says, False witnesses are risen up against me. And Psalms 54 3 says, Strangers are risen up against me. And also Psalms 86 verse 14, O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set thee before them. So we have false witnesses rising, we have strangers rising, and we have the proud rising. And he says they have not set God before them. Look at Deuteronomy 17, 14 through 15. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. So there's that one stone, that stone of stumbling, the word of God. And we're to have one king who is reigning over us, who is reigning in us. And that's the King James Bible. 
Okay, that's King Jesus, who is the Word of God. He is one with His Word. And we are not to have strangers' voices reigning over and in us. Jesus said in John 10, 4-5, And when He put His forth His own sheep, He goeth before them, and the sheep follow Him, for they know His voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from Him. For they know not the voice of strangers. Do you see all these emulators right here? These are strangers' voice. Alright, the second time false witnesses is mentioned in Psalms 35 verse 11. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Romans 8.33 Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Acts 7.59-60 And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now Stephen tried to warn them, but they just weren't having it. Look what Stephen said in Acts 7.51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. O oh, ye hypocrites, just like Jesus said to the Pharisees, right? They had the zeal not according to knowledge, and they thought they were keeping the law, but they weren't. Okay, the just one. That's the Holy One of Israel. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the Word of God, the King James Bible. And he says they do always resist the Holy Ghost. And just as Jannes and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. So to resist the the truth is to resist the Holy Ghost. To resist the Holy Ghost is to resist the truth. And Jesus said in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So for one to resist the word of God, the King James Bible, is to resist the truth, which is to resist the Holy Ghost, which is to resist God. So one can either receive the love of the truth or they can resist the truth. So they laid to my charge things that I knew not. Think of Job, right? Job 42 verse 3. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Jeremiah 11, 18 through 19. And the Lord hath given me knowledge of it, and I know it. Then thou showest me their doings. But I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter. And I knew not that they had devised devices against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be no more remembered. So this is that tree of life. Remember, Jesus said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are our life. They want to destroy that tree, which is why Satan has sown his tares and they have devised devices. And Job, his three friends, the Lord said they did not speak that which was right concerning him like Job did. Because the word of God says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. But the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. So God is merciful, and he desires all men to come to the knowledge of the truth.
Matthew 26, 59-61 Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. Now, does that not contradict what the Lord Jesus Christ said in very self? When he said, he came not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. He said that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they may have life and life more abundantly. Acts 6, 11 through 14 Then they suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and came upon him, and caught him, and brought him to the council, and set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. So you see here that these false witnesses, they are zealous about the law, the law of Moses, which they don't even keep. But here, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Apostle Paul, the people of God, the children of God, are preaching the gospel, the grace of God, the free gift of eternal life that we have in Jesus Christ and the blood that He shed on the cross for our sins. And they don't want to hear it. No, the Word of God says they delight in lies, which is why they resist the truth, the King James Bible, and they flock to the strangers' voices. Now the last mention of false witnesses is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 15, start in verse 12. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up if so be that the dead rise not 